Hello, this is Dr. Krause with an inverse kinematics two link uh, presentation. Uh, this is a little bit tangential to the kind of stuff that's maybe normally on my channel. It has nothing to do with Raspberry Pi or Arduino. Um, there's a little bit of Python involved, uh, but a number of my students are struggling with the elbow up solution and specifically the signs, the S-I-G-N positive and negative signs for the elbow up solution to this two-link inverse kinematics problem. Um, and it's just a smaller part of a bigger project that we're working on in a senior elective on a robotics class. So one of the reasons that this is tricky is that accidentally in the past, when I've presented the solution, I've always presented it elbow down. And so elbow down always means that this theta two is positive and then some other issues just kind of go away and they become unmasked if you don't find the elbow down solution first and then find the elbow up. So this picture has kind of been our guide in solving two link inverse kinematics. We can use the law of cosines. So we know X tip, Y tip, we're trying to find theta one and theta two that place the tip at that point. Um, we know L1 and L2 from the parameters of our robot. We could measure those with a tape measure if we had to. We can find this R um, based on the knowledge of X tip, Y tip. So R squared is equal to X tip squared plus Y tip squared. Um, I don't have a drama, but that's if you can imagine a triangle that looks like that, that has R as its hypotenuse and X tip and Y tip as its sides. It's a right triangle. So we just use the Pythagorean theorem, blah, 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 blah. Knowing R squared, we can then go into the law of cosines and solve for the cosine of alpha. So this is the opposite side, L1 and L2 become the two adjacent sides. So R squared is equal to L1 squared plus L2 squared minus two L1, L2 cosine alpha. Uh, do a little bit of algebra and solve for the cosine of alpha. Once I know alpha and the elbow down solution, theta two is just 180 degrees minus alpha. And if I know theta two, I can find these two blue sides, which then give me the opposite and adjacent sides for psi. And so I can find psi as the arctan two of L2 cosine theta two plus L1 plus L2 cosine theta two. So this is the adjacent side. This is the opposite side, arctan two done. I can also then find beta because I know X tip and Y tip. So that's also an arctan to Y comma X. And then knowing beta and psi, I can find the elbow down theta one. And so we've done that. And then we've often said, okay, and for the elbow up solution, theta two is just the negative of the elbow down theta two. And then theta one is beta plus psi. But if you just kind of do that in a rushed way, um, and try to find just the elbow up first, things get a little weird. So the solution, so this is just me making up a problem that is elbow up. So if I choose a negative theta two, I'm choosing an elbow up solution, make up some parameters and solve for X tip, Y tip. So based on 27 degrees, negative 39 degrees and seven inches and six inches, I have this X tip. So from there, I can just kind of crank through the stuff we just talked about, right? Like here's R, here's cosine alpha, trying to find the sine alpha in kind of a rigorous way. Alpha is 141 degrees, great. Um, theta two then becomes a negative 39 degrees for the elbow up solution. Okay, that's awesome, plug it along. Now if I just, without thinking about it, take my theta two that happens to be negative and plug it into my psi equation, I solve for a psi that's also negative. Um, okay, that probably should have been a warning. Uh, that seems a little weird, but I'm just going to keep doing the math and trusting Python and whatever, whatever. So I find beta, I find theta one, theta one's also negative. That seems a little weird. But then if I take those values and plug them into a forward kinematics check, so I'm finding the DH matrices, um, and maybe I should show those for people who aren't in my class. This is maybe not a thousand percent intuitive. Uh, but my robotics uh, library takes alpha A, theta D, alpha A, theta D, following the Denevit Hartenberg uh, procedure, convention, whatever. And then I define my P tip. And sure enough, when I try to then take P tip two, which I also didn't show, but that's just L2, zero, zero, and then the one, map it back. This is not 
the answer that I was looking for. And specifically, if I subtract that from there, something's quite off. And it turns out the issue is negative psi and negative theta 1 are messing with me. But why is that the case? So I want to flip over to here for just a second. Um, when we find the elbow down solution, theta 2 is positive, And then I find this edge and this edge. And I find psi, no big deal. Um, I think you can see that R doesn't change for the elbow up or elbow down. L1 and L2 don't change for elbow up, elbow down. So the alpha is the same. The whole thing is, in fact, symmetric about this line that has length R. So it should also be the case that psi is the same, and psi should be positive. It's kind of hard to draw a negative angle. So the issue is right here. We're drawing this angle, and the way that we've drawn it, I mean, you can't really draw a negative angle. That would be really weird and kind of hard to even explain what you did geometrically. So we draw this angle, and we draw it as if it's positive. But I'm going to call that theta 2 star. But from a dh uh, perspective, this is a negative rotation. If my z-axis is up, positive rotation is this way, negative rotation is that way. Sorry, I'm zoomed in a little too far. So the theta 2 that I'm going to use in my elbow up solution is actually the negative of this angle. But when I go to calculate psi, I need to treat this angle as if it were positive. And so I'm going to define a theta 2 star that's the absolute value of my actual theta 2. And when I plug that into my arctan 2 equation, I'll get a positive value for psi, and I'll get a correct value for the theta 1 hat. So theta 1 hat and theta 2 hat are the elbow up solutions. So from a Python standpoint, all that's really necessary is to go in and when I calculate psi, I need to put an absolute value on theta 2. That then will lead to psi being positive. And in fact, psi being the same value we had in the elbow up solution. Um, I guess I didn't work through that numerically. Beta won't change. And then when I add them, I'll get a positive 27 on theta 1, which was, in fact, the angle that we um, kind of made up. So it's a long explanation of all we really need to do is make sure this is an absolute value. Now, I could also add an absolute value here, but cosine doesn't really care about the sine of its uh, input angle. So then having theta 1 and theta 2, I can go back and redo my forward kinematics check. And I get the correct p-tip 0. And when I go to do my test, I get a little bit of a floating point thing. And so I have a function that takes really small numbers and just makes them go away. And we're good there. So again, the only real issue is that but when I go to calculate psi, I need an absolute value on theta 2. But it's this picture that is the y. I'm drawing this angle as if this were positive, and I'm using this side and this side to solve for psi. So I need those to be positive numbers, and psi should come out as a positive number. And it does. Um, let me know if there are any questions. Thanks.